right out of the box, there's something different here. This does not open with the timeline anymore. That is a thing of the past. So buckle up, Buttercup. There's going to be a few changes. If you look over here for timeline, you will not find it. Let me go ahead and just show you. Now, don't worry. Blender has got you. And the timeline editor was removed and replaced with the dope sheet. So when you open any old files with the timeline version up to the dope sheet, it will version up to the dope sheet and the playback controls will be shown in the footer. Now I've got the compositor 4.5 blender on the left and over on the right 5.1 alpha. I have the shift a menu kind of locked over there. So if I do shift a here, you come down to keying, you'll see that above that, obviously color and filter, there's now creative. So some different things are gonna be moved. You're gonna to have to get used to that. It's going to probably throw you off just a little bit. Just kind of get used to what there is or isn't going to be there. So under filter, we've got blur and we've got a sub menu, bilateral blur and so on. And if you come over here, filter, blur, bilateral blur, some of these are the same, but if you go to creative, you've now got Kawahara, Pixel, Posterize and some other things over here instead on the other side, they're just gonna be a little bit different. So over here in Blender 5, we would come down to filter, and then you can see different things like the Kawahara, Pixelate, and some other things. So there's a few changes, but I think all in all, what they're doing is making a more unified Blender and inside of Blender, not having it kind of fight against itself. So different menus and things you can actually get into will make more sense as they make them more uniform across Blender. Now, something else I want to make you guys aware of, it's a change from a while back, I think a Blender 4.1. If you come over here to import, what you'll see is you're looking for import images as planes. But guess what? It doesn't live in that menu anymore. Instead, you would hit Shift A, and then you would come on down, and you can go to Image, and what you'll do is you'll see mesh plane and when you click that it's going to come up and say hey what do you want to open let's open up something cool and i'll have this as an image as plane let's just forward slash isolate that and go into look dev and now voila there's your images as planes old but definitely something i know somebody's still searching for and just be forewarned anytime you're using an alpha version of blender it will be very unstable. I would definitely not move any important projects over to the alpha, save that for beta and then full releases and always back up your work. All right, let's have a little bit more fun. Let's go over here and go away from the dope sheet to the compositor, which always tends to get new nodes, new settings, all kinds of cool things. We've got an asset browser now. We all knew this was coming, nothing really new, but what you can do now is you, if you don't know how to set chromatic aberration, you can drag it and drop it and put it in there and then instantly get results. Okay. Now, if you go ahead and hit tab with that node highlighted, you will see, and I'll do control space bar actually is what um, does that. So you can kind of get in there. Now you don't have to be a math whiz or a compositor genius to get in here and set this up. And there may, may very well be node groups inside of node groups. So if you want to explore this and just learn a little bit more, I encourage you guys to jump in and do that. Now, I understand on YouTube, sometimes you guys can't really see what's going on. Let's go to 1.25. I think that's a little better. doesn't help me a whole lot. It crunches my screen up, but I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to hold down alt and then mouse this out of there. We can leave it to the side. It's too nice to destroy. So the vignette or vignette, however you want to pronounce that. I pronounce it vignette. Um, this is a big deal as well. Now, what we'll notice here is there's a little stack behind this. So what this is, I think representing is you can hit tab and go in and check this out. Oh, there was an error. What was that? That's interesting. It's probably me doing something too fast, but control copy. Oh yeah, that was, uh, that's my key capture add-on does not work in node editors. Very good. Okay. So no problem with Blender 5.1. So rounded square mask, we can tab into that. You've got a bunch of different math in here. And so if you ever want to 
get into it and control tab, tab, all those things get you in and out of those screens. Now control space bar will get you in and out there. Let me see if that does start back up. Okay, cool. So what I want to do is just show you guys the vignette. Uh, you can change how this looks. So you get different masks and you'll have transforms. That was actually the pop out there more than, more than likely. I'm still trying to figure some of this out, but I think when there is an actual node group there, kind of like this one, it's going to say, hey, there's one, two, three node groups built in, but I don't know just yet. It does seem to be that way. Uh, you'll have angle and some other things you can do and change in here, but like right out of the box, guys, you've really just got an incredible setting, and that almost looks like a an end screen, if you will. It's kind of cool. You can do all kinds of different things. So anyways, the compositor is amazing. Explore it, figure it out. I'm not going to cover everything. I want you guys to go through and see some of this yourself. I'll put the release notes link in the comments or rather the description. Guys, just a quick note, if you would like to help support this channel, you can do that through add-ons like cracks, double joints, and render switch, which I'm gonna let you guys know if you don't wanna crash before, during, and after renders, go check it out. I've got some videos on it too. It's all behind the scenes. You don't really have to do anything. It works well. Now, I also support the Blender Development Fund with proceeds from the add-ons, and I also have a collaboration partner, Sam, who helps make add-ons with me when I'm off doing my 9 to 5. So if you guys want to support my channel just a little bit more, I really appreciate it. Otherwise, thank you for being here, and a like and a subscribe will also go a very long way. And before I move on from this, if you are in a compositor workflow and you're not seeing what I'm seeing, all you have to do is come over to the viewport shading, come down here to compositor, and it can be set to just camera. So if I click away from the camera, you don't see the compositor view. I press zero, you can see the compositor view. If I come down and click always, then even when I scan out here, you'll still have that on the scene. And I think we could change how this looks a little bit. Pretty cool. You could probably use that almost. I really did not want to go full screen. Pardon me as I figure out my life. Okay, so what I would do sometimes, grab my um, camera back here and make it active. Sometimes the pass parte, I always called it pass part out when I was just learning in Blender, I think 3.0, and I got tore up pretty good for that. Yeah, so right underneath the viewport display, you'll have the pass parte, which is not the same thing. It, it blacks out anything or it will give a slight covering to everything outside of the actual camera view. So if you want to not be distracted by other things outside of the immediate camera view, pass parte is where you need to be. Not to be confused with the vignette. Pass parte vignette. There we go. We're speaking a different language now. Now this one is a little sad for an update, honestly, because people who are just coming into Blender aren't gonna wanna go learn how to create some geometry nodes group on a curve to set tangents, to understand what it means to properly set up the vectors, set up the alignments, alignments to normals, randomizations, things like that. It's just gonna be spoon fed to you now, but that's okay too, because we do want Blender's ease of use to be a little bit better and the learning curve to be a little bit less. So the new geometry nodes arrays, randomizations, and other node groups that are now available are really knocking that out of the park. Now you'll find this in the add modifier panel. There'll be some different things you can go in and search for randomizing, instancing. There's going to be instance uh, randomizations for curves. There's going to be the same for mesh. You're going to be able to do some of the weight paint that you see here in instance on surface. Uh, you'll be able to scatter. The scatter is pretty cool. I haven't used it too much, but one of those things that's really hard to do is properly get it scattered and understand the noise subtract 0.5 and the different things that we've all of us dinosaurs have been doing for a long time since the blender two days and blender three and now and then blender four and now five and we'll be in blender seven before we even know it so now you've got the option to do a lot of these things on autopilot effectively 
And then the array setup. Uh, this is pretty cool because now we're using gizmos, a lot of different things that you're not gonna have to deal with anymore and are just absolutely automated. Ease of use, you can jump into Blender and get instant results. And if you are an artiste or you're coming from another software, this is going to, I think, attract those people a lot better because now when you jump in, you're not gonna have to learn geometry nodes math. This one is really cool, guys. We can go in and just add geometry nodes and I'm just gonna do a mesh to points so I can get the domain that I want. And I'm gonna set that to points. Obviously it's on vertices, that's fine, that works great. Grab the camera, I'm gonna go to constraints. Now we've got geometry attribute. This will take the object, you can plug this in. And I, I know there's a way to point it and make it do the thing without the track two, but I haven't got there just yet. So I pick a target with a track two. I'll close the track two because I don't need it. I've got an attribute name, a data type, and then I've got the domain. So I'm on point, which works for me. If you don't have point or you don't have the domain correct, it's not going to work. So definitely match all that up. And for here, you know, you were meshed to points on a basic cube and we've got these set up the way they are. You can definitely go to edges if you want or faces. Vertices is kind of where I want to be right now. Now, here's the cool thing. When you come over to the index, you can shift this around. And I think you guys are going to see an insane use for this as some of you guys are just like geometry nodes based creators. And uh, so this is going to really, I think, be very interesting and very powerful way to animate cameras and anything else you can think of and create your own constraints. This next Blender 5 feature is really interesting and I think it's going to be useful now that it's been updated. So under the view tab, you can go to 3D cursor, go down, and now we actually have a real rotation for the 3D cursor. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you press T for the T panel here, switch off your selection box, go to cursor, you can go ahead and select, you'll probably be pre-selected for view, and this will just orientate 3D cursor rotation x y and z to the view now if you come over here this will grab the current transform so as you can see the um, this is actually following the viewport at the moment then we go to geometry uh, we'll see the different faces and how they are showing like the z is coming out here then if i was to say rotate this on the x at 90 and hit enter then grab this face, you'll still see this going this way, and now it'll actually show the Z going that way. So you're actually grabbing the current geometries transform. So pretty cool, very interesting, and lots of very good uses in the future. And another update that is really neat, if we go ahead and jump over into edge mode, I'll press Control E, pull up the menu, now edge bevel weight is gonna show up with an icon and a color that indicates the actual color of what is represented in the viewport. So if I pull this out, you'll see that would have been blue. I'm just gonna right click, remove. Uh, this one's gonna be purple for edge crease and it is in the viewport. We do this again on the mark sharp, well mark seam rather, that one will be red. And if I deselect that, obviously you'll see that's red. One more notable thing about this, if you're still in edit and edge mode, you can go to the mesh edit overlays. And if you have something marked seam, if by some chance you think it's marked and it's not showing up, you can go up here and verify that. And then of course for mark sharp, that's already going to be that way. Then you could set um, this how you wish. Now that's going to be a little bit better, a little easier to understand. And over in the UV editor, we know that with some recent updates to Blender 4.5, we've had the UVs available in object mode. And of course in edit mode, as we see, we have some different selections we can make here and they will stay. But now the sync selection has been fixed. So if I was to say switch into face mode and I want to select this face, then I wanna go into edge mode that is gonna stay selected. And then I will be able to start grabbing edges. I wanna go into vertex select. Then I will be able to grab these vertex as well around the outside edges. Now this is gonna make things, I think, a lot simpler for everybody. And now that it's working 
everything is more functional, a lot more useful. Now this next update is UVs as well. We have not left this screen. And on the number pad, four, six, eight, two will now move UVs. What does that mean? If I press four, six, eight, or two, it's going to respectively move this around in the viewport. The cool thing is if you hold down shift and press eight incrementally, you can move your UVs around with four, six, and eight, two all the same way. Now, if you don't have a number pad, you're going to need to go into your edit preferences, go to input and select emulate numpad. When you do that, you should be able to go up and press four, pull this back, six, eight, and two, and hold down shift and do the same thing that I just did between four and six. So that will be, I think, very helpful for you guys moving things around inside of the UV editor with obviously more updates to come. Now, I just want to personally thank everybody for being here. Go ahead and smash that like and subscribe if you enjoyed your time. And of course, drop in the comments the different updates and things that you guys have run into that you hope Blender is going to have. And if you don't mind, go ahead and support this channel by going over to some of my Blender market links and along with my collaboration buddy, Sam. And that way you're not only supporting us in our efforts here, making add-ons and update videos, but you're also supporting blender.org and the developers. Thank you so much for being here, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.